Hi, my name is John Dean and I'm a crime writer and I'm delighted to be taking part in this online crime festival. What I want to talk to you about over the next few minutes is the idea of ideas, what it is that sparks a crime writer or any writer into starting to write. First, a little bit about me. I'm sitting in my office, which is in the garage of my home in southwest Scotland. Uh, I'm the creator of the DCI John Blizzard and DCI Jack Harris novels. And I've got 19 books to my to my name and I'm working on the 20th at the moment. Why ideas? Ideas fascinate me. Ideas are absolutely crucial to the writing process. Uh, and I read a blog a number of years ago by a fairly well-known writer and he was quite sniffy about the fact that the question he said he loathed being asked the most when he did writing events, festivals, talking to groups at libraries, etc. was where do you get your ideas from? Well, I'm the first to admit it's not the most original of questions, but that doesn't make it a bad question. In fact, it makes it a good question. It goes to the very heart of the writing process because there has to be a moment when the writer's trigger in their mind flicks on and gets them writing, that they get so consumed by an idea that they have to write about it. That's certainly what happens to me and it's what happens to all writers. So I thought I'd explore that over the next few minutes with the story behind a couple of my novels. The first one uh, is The Killing Line, a Jack Harris novel, one of the ones published by the book folks. And I'd been toying for the, uh, with the idea for a while of a young teenage criminal, a lithe, lean, almost animalistic, feral character. And what would happen if I put him into the area where my Harris novels are set, which is the North Pennines, a remote valley in the North Pennines, what kind of mayhem would that cause to the society around him? And that was the idea, and I've been playing with it. But I hadn't started writing, and then I went for a walk with the dog. Not far from where we live, in Dumfries and Galloway, there's a wood, and it's a circular walk, and you can go across the top on the path, and then you drop down, and you come down the bottom of the path and back to the car park. And halfway down the bottom bit, there's a steep precipice. You look up and there's a steep rock face with trees and bushes clinging on for dear life. And I had a sudden image walking the dog one day of my character desperately fleeing down that rock face for his life, clinging on to bits of, of grass and tussock, grabbing onto them because he was being chased by the police. And that was the idea that I had. And I saw it vividly. I saw him vividly, really for the first time, and in the end, I, I decided to write a novel based around that idea I'd already had and him fleeing for his life. And the result was The Killing Line. The second one I wanted to talk to is the most recent one to come out. It's The Latchman, again by Book Folks and another one uh, featuring DCI, John Blizzard. And this shows the way ideas work. Ideas come to writers in all sorts of ways. They can be inspired by people. They can be inspired by place. They can be inspired by plots, some idea they hear and think that'll make a damn good story. Possibly by an idea. They want to write about greed. They want to write about fear. They want to write about evil. But they're inspired by various things. And the ideas work in two ways. One of which is, rather like with the killing line, they percolate. They evolve. They take their time to come to fruition. And then there's a trigger, a point when the writer thinks there's legs in this and I'll write about it. The Latchman was an example of that exactly. But it was a story I'd been aware of for a while. So that goes back to what I'd said about the idea of ideas percolating. It was a story on the periphery of which I was involved, very, very much on the edge. And it was a family story. And it involved an elderly relative who clearly was coming to the end of their life. And the arrival on the scene of another relative who've never really taken an interest in their life over the years, many years that they'd lived. But this character turned up in what turned out to be the final year of the elderly relative's life and was very attentive to such a degree that the rest of the family became suspicious. When the old dear died, the will turned out to have been changed and the will turned out to be changed in favour of the relative who was the Johnny-come-lately. 
That was the story the family told. Now, whether it's true or not, whether there's anything in it, I have no idea. But I've been aware of it and watching it, but not really being that interested, other than a peripheral observer. Then I went to the, the funeral, and outside the crematorium, after the service, everyone gathered as they do to look at the flowers. And my memory, and memory can be faulty, but my memory is that rather like the parting of the Red Sea, the congregation separated to allow a space in the middle of the area outside the crematorium. And rather like two gunfighters, the relative who was the Johnny come lately walked up on one side and the main person in the family who was aggrieved walked up on the other side and they approached each other. Now nobody knows what was said. It didn't take long, it was a few muttered words and they turned and they walked away and that moment of tension was broken and the story was ended. But for me as a writer, the story was just beginning. Because I thought, what a moment of drama. What if I could set a crime novel in a, in a family involved in such ferment? Add in the fact that I'd been playing around with for a while with the idea of a gentleman burglar who was raiding houses, co committing burglaries, terrifying the, the, the villagers around Hafton, which is where the Blizzard novels are set, a, a big city. And suddenly I had what felt like a novel that would work. This is how the Latchman begins. This is the first page. If I can get it. He arrived at the cottage in the village of Capeby Mallard shortly before one in the morning, walking softly down the side path and round to the back door. After standing and listening for a few moments, he tried the handle. It did not yield to his touch, so the man reached into his jacket pocket and produced a screwdriver. Within a minute he was stepping into the darkened cottage. He paused again to listen, then produced a torch by whose beam he picked his way across the kitchen and into the hallway. After taking a few paces, he pushed open the door into the living room, struck by the clammy heat even though the summer sun had gone down several hours previously. He picked his way over to the dresser where he started searching through the top drawer. A sound behind him made him turn and shine his torch into the darkness to find himself staring into the wide-eyed face of an elderly woman. All that inspired by a moment at a crematorium. So if you can go back to the beginning of, of, of this little film, which I hope you've enjoyed, that writer who was rather sniffy about the question, where do your ideas, where do you get your ideas from? Actually, the ideas get you. If a writer went out now, if I went out now into the hills and copses which surround where I live, looking for an idea, I could walk for days and hours and miles and years and never find it. But when I was least expecting it, when I was out walking the dog, when I was at a funeral, when I was walking into a, a building, whatever it might be, the idea would come and the idea would get me. That's how ideas work. It's not a bad question. And if when we're back to normal after lockdown and all this kind of stuff that's been going on, you see me at a festival or giving a talk at a library or a bookshop or whatever, do stop, do listen and do ask the question. Keep safe.